All right. Hello. Hi, everybody. My name is Grant Kastner. I am Extempore's community manager here for our third lovely day of this PDA against the 2022, featuring our first inaugural group of Extempore ambassadors, <laughs> Miss Dora Fobin and Callie Catherine Rump uh, uh, from Delaware. Dora is from California, presenting on communicative tasks on Extempore. I will let them take it away. Go ahead, Callie and Dora. All right, thank you so much, Grant. Um, my name is Catherine Rump, or also known as Callie. And today, like Grant said, Dora and I will be talking with you about using communicative tasks specifically on extempore. Okay, hi. Bonjour, I'm Dora Forbin, and I'm a French teacher at Mayfair High School and first batch ambassadors. <laughs> Great, so if you haven't already, please um, go ahead, share in the chat where you're from, what are you up to today, what do you teach? And um, again, my name is Catherine Rump or Callie and I'm a Spanish teacher in Apoquinimic District in Middletown, Delaware. And we were so thrilled to be this year's Extempore Ambassadors. Okay, I see Alejandro, bonjour. Oh, he's here in LA. Uh-oh, ah, bonjour, Celeste. Hola, Celeste. Bonjour. Bonjour, hola. Share Salut. Merci d'être venu. All right, we're so glad that you could join us today. And uh, we're going to go ahead and Sherry. <laughs> yes, so uh, as we just mentioned, we are really excited to have you here today, taking your time off your busy schedule. So uh, exactly a year, you know, I attended uh, some ext um, extemporary extra banger. And little did I know I was gay, I was going to get so hooked. So um, for the agenda today, as you see, we are going to um, just talk a little bit about uh, uh, the research. And of course, we have our task for lower attractive filter and SEL, which uh, the ones all teachers will be working on right now. And of course, what is communicative task? We're gonna dwell on that. How can we use this communicative task to improve speaking skills for our students? Because the goal here is to have them speak. And of course, the Q&A, if you have any questions, concerns, the resources and a fair share. And of course, for the resources, we're gonna share uh, a folder, uh, which you can access at the end and the feedback that we also need. So um, at this point, we are going to start. Kelly, you want to start? All right, so I wanted to start today's presentation with this quote. It's astonishing how much enjoyment one can get out of a language that one understands imperfectly. Um, because so much of the time when we're working with our students and lurking, working with learners of a language, they're gonna be using the language imperfectly, but we wanna be focusing on communication and what can be understood, focusing on their proficiency, and a lot of what we talk about today is how we can use those communicative tasks with extempore. Um, so a little bit about the research that we did with the effective filter and using SEL in our classrooms. As a reminder, the effective filter is kind of like a mental block that someone might develop when they're learning a language. It might stem from their previous language learning experience, um, how they feel about learning language in general. And if someone has a higher effective filter, they're gonna be more anxious and potentially less successful in the classroom. So combining talking about effective filter and SEL um, are ways that one might lower the effective filter and then provide students with a uh, basis for those communicative tasks to be more successful. So if we delve a little more into talking about the effective filter, we want to, of course, start our classroom with our comprehensible input. And the comprehensible input piece comes from communication from the teacher, readings that you do, your um, authentic texts, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. And then they have to kind of pass through this effective filter that students might have developed and if students have a lower effective filter, more of that comprehensible input might pass through versus a high 
effective filter. And um, we're using those LAD or language acquisition devices in our classroom. Those are the activities that you do in your day-to-day -day lessons and classes that we might do um, movie talks, we might do storytelling, you might do read and discuss. There's a whole variety of activities that we're gonna do with our students to help them get to communicating. And finally, the input that we give them can become part of their learned knowledge. And that's where they'll be going into combining with what they have learned, with what they already know, and making their own kind of interlanguage as they're working towards growing their proficiency. So some ways that we might lower the effective filter are building relationships with our students, providing things such as word walls and sentence starters, um, or even allowing for retakes on assessments. So my question for you, and you can respond in the chat or potentially on mute, are what are some of the ways that you work in your classroom on lowering that effective filter with students? I do all of the ones you just said. So I guess I'm doing that already without knowing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. A Thank lot of a lowering know. effective filter is just good practices in working with building relationship and providing support for STEM and learning a world language. You, you, you have some answers in the chat, Nick. Yep. Um, we have a question of the day. So something that students like have like an I can or something they're working towards. Um, apps such as Poll Everywhere and Mentimeter so they can type out. Yes. An answer, but then you can still get response from all of them. I love that Yana said, making the class predictable and having a routine so they know what to expect. Those are all really great ways that we can lower that effective filter. Something that I feel goes hand in hand with lowering the effective filter is working with students on social emotional learning. And social emotional learning is defined by the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning as the process through which students, or excuse me, children and adults understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships and make responsible decisions. Now, of course, all of this is a skill that you learn throughout a lifetime. So what can we do to support our students who are young people working in a classroom. So some ideas for SEL, making that relationship building, of course, helping students set goals, helping them with um, monitoring how they're feeling. I wanna go back to the chat again and see what are some of the ideas that you might have for social emotional learning in your classroom. And then I'll share some ideas with you as well. Great establishing rapport, having the word wall, putting time in so they really expect, know what is expected of them by their proficiency level. That's great, Vinny, because so much of the time they think they're supposed to be typing out these paragraphs in the world language that they're learning when they're not at that level yet. Brain yeah, break. Thanks. Word wall. Playlist, word walls. Uh, that playlist is so fun, especially if you um, do activities with songs like um, they have the uh, Locura de Marzo or the Mania Musical for uh, Spanish and French, consistency, mm -hmm. teamwork. That's great. Yes, um, that's so great. Not having like a culture in your classroom where you can make fun of someone when they're trying to learn the language using Yabla. Okay. So some of the ideas that I have that can even be used in the target language are like some of you mentioned, having a greeting and routine. You can have target language greetings, simple commands that they do using TPR, total physical response. You can do kind of brain breaks on a scale of, or using opinion, using target language numbers on a scale of one, two, three, uno, dos, tres, colors, on a scale of weather, like, are you feeling sunny today? Or are you feeling cloudy today? Uh, my favorite or one must go, talking about your preferences and dislikes. 
well-being checks, um, so important for all of us. Um, you can use them in the target language, having that word wall of different expressions for how you're feeling. Relationship building, like we talked about, using something like special person interviews and partner strategies. And finally, um, my last idea here is having exit tickets. So sharing a positive reflection of the class that day, doing a check for learning. Um, let's see, and a couple other ideas, allowing students to provide answers through the computer, exactly picking a topic to discuss in the target language. So then you have the high student interest, the scale ups for well-being, study buddies. These are some great ideas. So now we're gonna get into focusing on tasks. And the thing with using tasks in our classes are that when students are engaged in a task, the focus is on communication and it, it can allow them to put their anxiety aside because they have a purpose and they'll become immersed in what is the communicative reason for what I'm doing versus like, oh my gosh, did I use like three forms of ser and a star or did I use the correct tense when they actually have um, something meaningful to talk about. So we're gonna show you a variety of different tasks and a little bit of how you can prepare students to get ready for these tasks using extempore. Okay, so Dora is gonna start us talking about interpersonal tasks. Yeah, thank you, Kylie. So uh, what is an interpersonal you know, communication task? Uh, we are going to dwell into that in the coming up of and the next slides. But prior to that, um, I would like you to share your thoughts. Um, if you talk to a man in a language he understands that goes to his head, if you talk to him in his language that goes to his heart, so and this is from Mandela, and he writes in peace, would you please um, type in the chat what are the keywords here? What are the key words in this quote? Or you can unmute. What will be the key words here? Okay, we have talked from Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. Oh, hard to understand his language. Yeah, très bien. So Kelly, you can show that. When you talk to someone, his language and his heart, you see? Because here we're talking about emotion at that time and you kind of merge together that, hey, we are ready to share. And so we teachers try to have our learners, the students, try to sound as native as they can. That is the goal here. We're gonna move to the next slide. So we are going to have you read. <laughs> I see Ronita sending us the last one. Thank you. Um, Please do not type, do not send your answer right now. I want you to go over these different um, elements that will, yes, thank you, Linda. <laughs> that will define what is interpersonal task. And don't put in the chat right now, we're gonna have a waterfall. So in, when I go on the count of one, two, three, that's when you post the letters that you have chosen. So at this time, you want to go over and you will have to share the letters in on a count of one to three. So is it memorized? What do you think is interpersonal? Uh, what are the ones that we are going to classify? Yep. So on a count of one to three, uh oh, Melanie, is it only D? You want to see how many letters can we have? and it's on a count of one to three, then you just post your letters. So if you want the G, is there any other letter you want to add? <laughs> okay, so. Okay, sorry, I jumped again on that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we have those students, don't worry. Okay, on a count of one to three, let it, let's have a waterfall. I see Sherry, CDI. Are we going to have someone that gives it in a coral other? Let's go, oh. GCH, we are still missing. Oh, BC. Oh, I think Celeste got almost all of them. Okay, Kelly, can you start showing us? Thank you. Oh, and Kelly. 
no, I, so, I might have had an inside help on that answer. Yeah, so <laughs> helping partner, it's spontaneous, <laughs> indicating interest because they have to show interest. You know, if you're talking to someone, it's a two way communication. And we have two more. Okay, asking for clarification. And of course, it's focused on message. So we will all agree that when we are having interpersonal um, tasks assigned to our students, we have to pay attention if we have all of these. If it's focused on accuracy, it's not interpersonal. We are going to refer to actual document. So what is interpersonal mode of communication? And we have seen these uh, diagrams as we are teachers that teach languages. This mode, of course, requires negotiation. Are you able to do a negotiation of meaning? Exchange information, not only one person, it can be two, more than, uh, more than two, because when we do group work, that's when we have in more. And of course, interpersonal, and of course, interpersonal <laughs> has two parts. It can be the written and the reading of the speaking, signing and listening. I see uh, Vinny. Thank you, Vinny. Maybe we'll look at the A when we get to the Q&A. Thank you. So here we have, uh, what do we have to focus on when we are designing our interpersonal task? We have to have a new lens of authentic purpose, uh, activity purposefully, okay? So for example, here we have to include a situation. For example, you are host, you are the host of a family member's birthday party. This is the situation. And then what is the student task? Choose some household chores you will do for the preparation and give reasons for doing these chores. They have to create a dislike or to do a recording of a video about the preparation. Then they have to discuss, talk about it, you know, to talk about their choices with a partner. So you see that in this type of um, activity or in a community that's, you have all those elements that are in there. And I will refer to Leslie Grant's crap. Uh, Kelly, uh, Kelly, you want to type that? Uh, do we have the S, the S and for the situation? Do you have the role? Do you have the challenge? Does it have a product? That is when you see that you are, um, one second, let me put that. That is the acronym. And Leslie Graham is one of uh, those prolific teachers who has retired, who does all these uh, uh, workshops. That's where I got that from. So if you design your assignments this way, you are really targeting on those communicative tasks. On the other hand, we have authentic resources. There are so many. You only have to choose and make sure you align it with whatever you want the student to do. How can you have the students ready to complete communicative tasks? I'm here sharing some of the tips that have been working with me, uh, the readiness for speaking tasks, and in this case, on extemporary. Um, we're gonna have a few seconds. You can read what we have here. And then on the chat, is this something you agree with or will you share anything that you do in your class that works for you? So um, this is my five tips go to. <laughs> the routines, you have to be able to establish, you know, the speaking expectation. Uh, they can be controlled. You have to provide for repetition. We have the Q and A HANA that works for me. Yeah, I see I've been putting super seven, super seven in all languages. Yeah, merci Celeste or oh, oh, Grant <laughs> before they use them. Okay, make sure. And that is where we are having that are control. So the um, Alondra, I think you can see my number three here, where we have the gap fillers, opinion, uh, reaction, or regardance. And of course, this is where you have to be able to provide these handouts for the student to lean on. 
before they get ready using uh, them spontaneously in any task. We have, okay, Melanie says she uses all of them, rubrics, which um, uh, Dr. Henshin mentioned. Uh, but these ones you will see in the folder, I took them from Martina. Okay, thanks. And of course, the seven super seven, the super seven list. So how can we use communicative task in extempore to develop proficiency in all modes of communication? So Kylie's going to share. Okay, so we have a variety of different tasks and we're gonna share them with you here, talk a little bit about them. And at the end of the presentation, you'll be able to grab them from our slides and add them to your extemporary accounts. Um, so the first example I have here is a personal reflection where students are taking a present, um, sorry, it's a presentational speaking and students are taking a little personality quiz on their daily technology use to know if they're addicted to technology or not. And then they were kind of were asked to reflect on the amount of A's, B's and C's to know how addicted are they. And it had a very high interest, very relevant and um, good practice for them to be able to take information and put it back out with a short uh, video response. And this I used in my level four class. Um, yes, so <laughs> Grant saying students are addicted to technology, it's impossible. And um, yes, all of our presentation will be shared, including these activities with you at the end. And this next one is another presentational speaking. And this one had them using an authentic text. It's an infographic. I really like using infographics because of the pictures, numbers. There's not always a lot of text um, so they don't have to get kind of bogged down with reading. And here they had to note important information and do a short reflection and then create their own question at the end. And so here they're talking about the um, use of water and having access to safe water. And again, this was something that I used with an upper level class. This was for Spanish four. So with both of the two previous tasks, this, not this way, this way backwards, this one with the technology, this one with the water, like Grant said earlier in the chat, having a basis of vocabulary beforehand, we wouldn't just dive in and this would be like, the first task they would do. We would have already been focusing on a variety of different inputs and a variety of different activities to have students learn the vocabulary before they were then asked to do a presentational task. And now we have an example for Dora. Yes, thank you. So here we have speed dating. All of us, most teachers, I would say, use speed dating. So you see that it's a traditional activity, but you can also do it in digital form. Um, you know, when quarantine hit, I was like, how am I going to get all my students to participate in, uh, in the classwork? You don't know who's going to be there the next day. So speed dating was one activity that kind of promoted this communicative task, um, um, uh, way of using extemporary. Here, you see at the bottom right of each slide, you are going to see the levels. Because this means that uh, maybe French one will not be able to do that. No, here. They're just asking the questions and then the classmates just plug in any time and they can answer. They have a choice to listen to as many as they can and provide answers to the questions. The 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 I'll say the cons in this uh, using this in extemporary, it's only the fact that you won't have that back and forth quick, immediate um feedback from your classmate. But you will see how on the right side, um, the how it's populated with students respond. Of course, here is the grading, listening to all of them and grading, but at least they could do it. So you see here, we have an example of a, a synchronous um, activity on extemporary. Four corners also worked on extemporary. Here, I uh, uploaded an image. I had four different uh, shopping locations. So this is French too. The students, prior to getting on extemporary, they had to pick 
the numbers. So they did not know what picture they were going to have. And when they, they log in into uh, extemporary, they looked at their picture and they had to start talking about why they'll go in a certain shopping location, they give the reasons. And of course, here we need uh, feedback from our class, from their classmates saying, hey, I would rather go here because this is this, this. So exactly like the four corners that you put the papers on the floor and the students are moving around. The only difference here is it was tactic that they will have to stay on the same picture. And this was a synchronous activity. Picture talk. Uh, this is a flyer, all in French. And here the student had to help. You can look at the directions. We have a situation and we have a task. The student had to help a friend that's looking for a job, but the job, was, it's in French. So their job here was to uh, say in their shared language what the flyer was uh, kind of promoting. And you see here we have mediation. And thanks to Grant, he has a, a blog that thoroughly shows us how to use this. It really worked well. In each room, I had three students. And uh, when I listened to their work, it showed that mediation really works well. Group discussions, of course, collaborative work. Uh, here we have exchange of ideas, of course, follow up questions, opinion orientated. And of course, this was uh, asynchronous. The students were in two rooms, which means the student who's not in class was able to do it uh, at home. All they had to do was the click to what their classmate has said and the react to it. This is a high level that's French three, four, and AP, all of them, because it's a combo class. And they have watched a video on um, uh, organic food and organic farmers. And then they had to make a research on their own and uh, different um, videos about um, organic food. And that is how they get on extemporary and they share their ideas and their opinions with the follow-up questions from each other. Video clip talk. These are short videos which I love to use for fluency. The students had to look at a picture and I give them seconds. It's great for vocab. It's great for putting in, infusing your grammar. Like in this case, uh, the student had learned the passé composé and it was on household chores. They look at the picture and they had to fill in the blanks, looking at the subject, looking at who is doing the action. Of course, they had to react. Now, if my partner says, uh, this is the, action going on there, you say, uh, je suis pas d'accord, and you have to say what is going on there, on the picture. So picture talk is a great way of uh, increasing, uh, let's say, students' vocab or fluency. Oui, merci, Kali. So we go back to Kylie. All right, so here is another example of interpersonal, and this is one of the things that I really enjoy using extempore for, um, because the students in our school, everyone in level two takes the interpersonal simulated conversation on the Apple. Um, and so this was one of the tools that I enjoyed using to help them prepare for that. Uh, kind of feeling of that conversation. Um, so in a simulated phone dialogue where there's an audio that'll play and it has like a seven second pause in between each one during which the student responds. Um, this particular one was about making plans. And so then what I like to have the students do is that they'll start the recording on their end, then play the recorded audio so that both can be heard like a sort of back and forth dialogue when I go ahead and listen to it. Um, and when I asked them after they had done the Apple, do you feel like that was like extempore? They were like, oh yeah, it was just like it. So hopefully they really felt like it was a valuable task for them in order to practice. And this last one, I think this is my last example, um, is a presentational speaking. It's appropriate for a level one or novice um, where they're going to look at 
a picture of a weather and decide what clothes they want to wear. I did ask them to use a variety of vocabulary. So I wanted them to use at least five different types of clothing that might be appropriate for them to wear. And I wanted them to use complete phrases as much as they could to try and challenge themselves because we did this towards kind of the end of the year as a review activity. Um, but it's something that you could modify and ask to the students to make more of like a list or um, if you wanted to level it up, they could have to use um, not only what clothing they would wear, but adding on like what activities they would do, who they would go with, or um, what different things they might like when they're visiting. In this example, it was a Buenos Aires for the weather. Oh no, I do have another one. Um, compare and reflect. Here I asked students to do a presentational writing they had to watch the video about um, access to electricity and then compare it with their own experience and reflect on how electricity might impact people's lives. And this was something for students at a more advanced level. So I'm just gonna play a short piece of the video and then you could see that they would respond using um, the keyboard if they needed to and respond in the target language. ¿Qué tienen que ver la energía y la pobreza? Imagina que no tienes energía eléctrica por una hora, por un día o por una semana. En América Latina y el Caribe, cerca de 20 millones de personas no tienen acceso a electricidad. Nunca. Como Marcia, que vive en un pueblo remoto del Amazonas. Para ir a la escuela, tiene que navegar este río. Y cuando llega a clase, no tiene electricidad. And then it talks a little bit about, it's talking about how, imagine if you didn't have electricity for an hour, a day, a week, or ever, and how the student in the video lives in a region that has no access to electricity and what she does when she goes to school and eventually how her school life changed when electricity was brought to them. And so I wanted students to kind of compare and reflect and, um, when I was kind of going over the slides, I was like, wow, it's super relevant because just like a week ago, we lost electricity for 12 hours from a storm and my kids were like, when are our videos coming back? So it would really be something for them to experience having no electricity. ¿Qué tienen que ver la energía y la pobreza? All right, back to Dora, please. Yeah, as uh, Kelly mentioned, you see relevance. We are trying to see as much as relevance that we can use in our classes. So information gap. And Dr. Henschel mentioned information gap again yesterday. So here I have a B partner. They have clues. So there is a background work done in there. You have to um, create the, uh, the different uh, crosswords and then run copies. And I gave a um, version to one group of students and B version to another group of students. Then the students go on extemporary. They have to use um, the vocab, the expressions that they have learned in this um, theme, which was uh, les tâches ménagères. They have to use reaction, uh, feedback, and of course, why do we say it's communicative? They had to use rephrasing, uh, clarifying meaning. So the students on extemporary um, kind of, I, well, I had them outside, it was back to back and each student had their computer, which means I am doing my recording of the feedback that I'm giving to the students, that's my partner. And that is how this activity was done. Um, if you have the correct answer, your classmate, your partner will tell you, we, that that's the correct answer. And then later on, you had to fill the blanks. I think the second part shows the... So this uh, slide just shows uh, how I had the student um, on extemporary. Um, it was seven rooms because each room had two students. And on the right side again, you see how um, their work is populated here. I had to delete the last names. Here it says, this is for my lower levels. Um, 
Again, here we have clarifying and negotiation of meaning. And here we also have a lot of repetition, but then we also have opinion. The students, if you look at the task, they had one minute to complete this activity. Uh, why one minute? Because it was a controlled practice in this case. We have done the activities in class and here they had to go now show how they could use a language. It was on healthy food, which is focusing on vocabulary, how much of this they can say. And while they are using uh, their vocabulary on taste, on flavor, that's how they are, they are sharing their reason of choosing a specific healthy food to help their friend who doesn't speak the target language. Um, I just like have my closing thoughts. So we have this quote as part of our closing thoughts. Oral communication is at the heart of language learning. It's the vehicle through which learners build relationship and develop intercultural competence. Through oral interpersonal communication tasks, learners engage in a low stakes environment in preparation for real life interactions. And we got that quote from Actful. And it's just so important when we're thinking of what students wanna be able to do when they come into our class, is usually to speak um, and talk about themselves, talk about their friends and what they like to do, um, which is why practicing having these little conversations, talking about your daily life are key when we're in the classroom in order to prepare them for, like it says, our real life interactions. Yeah, and as I tell my students, if you come to class and you step out without speaking, you waste your time. We have to speak. So do you have any questions, comments? I would just like to thank you all for your presentation. Uh, you gave me some really good ideas. Some of them yeah. I have used in the past, but some other ones, I really like the information gap and the hear it, say it. And yeah, so I'm gonna totally use those in my classroom. Thank you, that was our goal because um, we may have a tool and maybe we just do the same, uh, you know, it's just to kind of share a little bit of other activities that you could use. Thank so you. We'll, I'll I go see. to the next slide. Okay. So here we have a link to all of our resources and the one right at the top is something that Dora developed for French class and we'll share. I can get the chat to come back up for you. And that just has some of the rubrics and you can talk a little bit more, Dora, about what's there. Yes, um, so if you don't mind, you can open the first one, which is the, mm -hmm. so when you access this folder, you have a, you know, a little snip of how you can use this. So I wonder, you can check this. The only thing I'm thinking now uh, to put it in Spanish. Now you can choose the ones you want to. And of course, I say exactly where I got this from, and uh, you just have to adapt it to your own language. These are great to have students ready to spontaneously speak. Now, how do you use this? You, as a teacher, you have to find a way to infuse this in your in your lessons, in your in the. I mean, even when something happens in class, and uh, you use this, the students will pick up from there. Uh, when I say infuse and lessons, I have short uh, conversation dialogue where I have to make sure that I'm infusing any of this. I have to include these. And so when the students read with me, they get used to having um, all of these. Right. And um, if you're someone who enjoys using Bitmojis in your classroom, I don't know for other phones, but if you have an iPhone and you change your phone's language to your target language, your Bitmojis language is also translated. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we put our slides onto the sketch, you'll have 
ability to click on each one of the links in order to grab the tasks that we presented today and add them into your extempore account. And they're also on the extempore commons. Mm -hmm. uh, Kylie, since we still have a few more seconds, can you go back to the folder? I would really like to show the, uh, um, the Q&A. The second one? Um, yes. You can scroll. Now this Q&A um, table, it's great for all levels. And so you have, scroll a little bit for the title. Mm -hmm. What's, when you, when you are teaching a unit or a chapter, you have questions that pop up. So the students have to write down the questions and then we have an answer given in class that the student have the responsibility of writing their own answers, like French one. If we learn how to say, what is your name? So on the question side, we're gonna have comment tu t'appelles? And then the answer, je m'appelle Dora, je m'appelle Kylie. So they write it down. Now, the translation uh, column, it's optional. If the student know that they will remember what comment tu t'appelles is, they don't have to write anything here. And then the last column, the topic is written in a shared language. And so they'll put the word like introductions or, you know. And so by the end of the semester, we have many questions here. And then when we are getting ready for speaking, the students can look these or sometimes I just uh, have numbers because if you see the first column, that's numbers there. So I have, uh, Kylie, can you show them maybe one that is um, completed by student? And so the students just uh, pull, um, no, the, this one is a higher level. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, uh, the one that says F1. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you see, you are going to see a sample of student uh, Q1A uh, handout. So you see every student has this, they, they absolutely have this in their binders. They come to school every day with it, though it's on Monday because it's a short day and sometimes Fridays that we go in here and update. And when we are updating this, we are writing at the same time. Every student number three will be exactly the same. Why? Try and imagine that is the end of the school year or you are getting ready for the finals. The student come and pull a number or a piece of paper that may have number three, 10 and 20, because I've gone through and I see these numbers can make a consistent um, dialogue conversation for the student. So immediately they have those, they look at the topics and they have to have that conversation ready. Then they can come in front of the class or if it's the one-on-one -on -one with the teacher, seat and then they have to complete their conversation. All I have to do at that time is to tell them, make sure you have uh, your greetings, uh, say something about yourself, and then you move to the main topic and end with greetings. So uh, that is how I use the Q&A. And it goes from French one to a uh, higher level because they have different uh, topics, different questions. And there's a question um, for new language learners, is the Q&A response in English or in the target language? The Q&A expected to respond in English or in the, no, 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 the, <laughs> they have to respond in the target language. They have to respond in French. They have to respond in French. Uh, Como ça va? They have to say ça va bien. They can say ça va, yes. But when they're writing the response, you're guiding and scaffolding, and that's why they have this paper there, correct? When, they, when we are writing the response, we have we already done with learning that in the lesson. So this is just preparing them as a handout, go to whenever the need. And then by the end of uh, the semester, because if we do this every Friday or every uh, Monday at the beginning of the lesson, you know? So then after that, they do without the paper. So if I see you even outside in the hallway and I say, Comment ça va? they have to be saying, ça va bien, but they are not having the paper. So if you like, this paper is like a guideline, it's like, a, you know, and so it helps them. It's just like 
collecting all the things that we are learning in terms of exchanging information. All right. Um, so we're getting ready. Obviously, we're near the conclusion. We just want to say thank you again so much for attending today taking time out of your busy schedule and your summer break to check out our presentation. Um, please keep in touch. Our emails are here. Our social media Twitter name is here. So we'd love to stay connected with you. Check out our blogs on Extempore. Um, and of course, make sure you follow Extempore on social media as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for attending. Uh, as Dora and Callie noted, these, these slides will be up on uh, the Sketch platform for you to access later on. And of course, we have a feedback form for you to fill out. I will put the feedback form link into the chat. Get your entry into today's, or Callie, if you don't mind, if you can copy and paste, paste that over. I don't have it up right now. Um, scan the QR code, fill out the form, and get your entry into our giveaway so that you can get some $50 to Target if you're lucky. Any questions? Any Comments. I'm sure Dorian Grant, would be happy to. Grant, so, someone is asking me about the IG address for extemporary. Yeah, uh, no, no tenemos IG. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just Twitter. Thank you, everybody. I see your messages. Thank you. <laughs> Imagination. <laughs> and then we have blogs about what we just mentioned here um, communicative tasks. Uh, Kylie, yours was uh, the topic. That you have to go to the and is my blog is um lowering the effective filter with communicative tasks so a little bit of like what i talked about earlier today yeah <laughs> alejandro it's it's our account like i said we just don't post it on it that much that's all we're we're mostly twitter and facebook <laughs> Yeah, make sure you join the extempore Facebook group. Yeah, jo join, our, join our extempore Facebook group. All sorts of cool stuff so you can see me post. All right, go for it. If there are no, yeah, Twitter too. If there are yeah. no further questions, I think we can close here. Okay. Dora, Kelly, thank you all so much. Our ambassadors, fantastic language teachers, French, <laughs> Spanish, across different coasts of the country west from west coast to east coast just knocking it out for us thank you all so much for attending please stay tuned for the rest of our pd extravaganza tomorrow uh and this afternoon if you're not familiar with extemporary come stop by hang out talk to me and learn all about the platform if you're not familiar and hope to see you all tomorrow and friday see you guys thank you thanks everyone gracias thanks. thank Bye. you Adios. merci beaucoup